Welcome to She Rose Lee. I had to put a little single ladies on. <laughs> My staff is laughing at me because I just needed to do it for tonight. Okay, all the single ladies, I need you in the room, but this is really not just for singles. I need my sisters in the room. If you have girlfriends, if you have a circle that you're connected to, tonight you're going to be tremendously blessed. Um, one of my desires for 2022 when it concerns She Rose League is to open you up to hear new voices and to bring people that are doing amazing things in their field, in their craft, in their ministry, in their assignment, and uh, have a chat with them because we are, um, the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We're strengthened by the stories of others. And so tonight is She Rose League and I've got a special guest, but I need y'all to get this number up. Go ahead and share it. I've shared it. If you know a single female, I think the brothers need to eavesdrop on this tonight too, because you may learn something about us that you didn't know. So all the brothers come on in, single ladies come on in, marry people that you feel like you got to hook all your single friends up. You need to listen in the, on this conversation tonight. And then if you're just a girl that just enjoys sisterhood, like, you know, be it a sorority, be it, you know, your sisterhood in your church, be it your sisterhood, your circle of friends. Y'all know I'm all big on my inner circle. I see my aunties out there. Hello, aunt. You prayed last night. Um, and then, of course, I see B. Marie and Stephanie. Let me know where you guys are watching from. I see Hampton, Virginia's in the house. DMV, y'all got to represent tonight because our guest is from that area. So I want to see you in the house. I see you, Helen Duncan. I see you, Miss Cynthia Jacqueline. Tonight is going to be good. I want y'all to get this number. We're almost close and ready for me to bring on my guest. Miss Vicky, you prayed last night. If y'all missed Outpour last night, go back and watch it. Like, go back. And it was amazing. It was amazing. I'm, I'm so excited about this season in my ministry, in my life. And I'm excited about She Rose League. Oklahoma's in the house. Come on. Uh, Y'all know I got a little Oklahoma in my heart. Boomer Sooner, OU, all the way. All that graduated from Sam Houston State University. I'm a University of Oklahoma Boomer Sooner until I see Jesus. It's just a part of me. Um, yeah, once you once you hit that campus and do some time, do a year there, you're a Boomer Sooner, sooner for life. All right, Houston, Texas in the house. Detroit is in the house. We feeling like Detroit and Houston. It is cold, y'all. I do not like the cold like this. I am over this weather. Uh, it is cold, cold, cold in Houston. So I trust that you all are staying warm and safe. Nassau, Bahamas in the house. Come on, I need one more person to share this good deal. The number is where I want it. Hello, Pastor Washington. Uh, how are you? It is a night where we're going to be talking about singles and sisterhood and salvation. And just because we're talking about being single, don't think that this is, you know, just a, you know, a casual conversation. Y'all know in She Rose Lee, we always drop nuggets to take your life to the next level. So help me without further ado. And y'all know I don't, I'll let her introduce herself, but uh, my assistant actually told me about her and uh, I'm excited. We've already been chatting before we came online, so I know the conversation tonight is going to be amazing, but can y'all welcome Jennifer Trotter to She Rose League, so give her some hand claps, put some hearts, do something. Welcome, lady. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm absolutely wonderful. Delighted to talk to you tonight. You know, delighted to have this conversation. Lisa spoke highly of you. And then I did a little searching on your Facebook. And uh, I see you like to have a good conversation. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think you like to stir the pot. I saw some stuff that you were stirring the pot. You were stirring the pot. So we're going to stir the pot a little bit tonight in our conversation. But before we get into it, can you just introduce yourself to everybody? And we welcome you to She Rose League. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. I am Jen. I am a preacher, teacher, and content creator, um, a Christian influencer. And I talk about all the things singleness, sisterhood, and of course, Jesus. So I'm excited to be here tonight. And I'm a conversationalist, so I'm excited to talk about some good talk tonight. Good deal. Let, let's get into it. And I got some questions, but the, I saw something on your Facebook page today, and I'm going to jump in with that. Um, because 
I think I even, you know, y'all know I'm single. I've been single for 11 years. And this being a saved single, but yet flirting. Can we flirt at saved singles? Can we flirt? You know, or is, what's too much? That is an excellent question. So, yes, we can flirt. I believe that there is a tasteful way. Of course, we represent and we advocate for the kingdom. So it doesn't mean that you're, be, you're doing too much, but sensuality for a woman is big. Batting your eyes, a smile, an inviting smile, compliments. I think there is nothing wrong with that to let someone know that you think they're attractive or that you would like to get to know them. Now, I do believe, okay, I don't want y'all doing too much. Don't, you know, <laughs> we doing too much because we still women of God. But I believe that there is a tasteful way to engage in flirtatiously. I, I, I believe that's how people get married. I, don't, I mean, it ain't no business contract. So somebody doing some smiling, some grinning, some complimenting, Something is happening. The people are getting married, so we gotta we gotta engage a little bit in a tasteful way. Okay, so you you said tasteful way, and you said and and of course flirting. See, to me, dating, courting, you know, those words are relative to your generation. So when a person says flirting, is it just that I'm being, you know, like is it is it how I dress? Is it is it am I you know? doing the whole twirl in my hair? Is it, am I being the damsel in distress? Is it, what, what is flirting? I think it's whatever is natural to you. I wouldn't recommend um, necessarily flirting with clothing because that could be a little suggestive, but make, so I realized that some of the women of God are me, okay? They don't want to be bothered. They look like they don't want to be bothered and they have like this stoic, you know, type of appearance. When we're in a social setting, be present, smile. If someone is engaging with you, it's okay if you give them a little, a little smirk, a little <laughs> blowing of the, you know, flowing of the hair. Um, compliment their tie, um, compliment their haircut. You know, something that you may see that you find appealing to them, and and really just engage in healthy conversation. But that is not brother sister now we know that that is your brother in christ so we don't want you again because i you know the people they get excited i don't want you doing too much but if this is someone that you find attractive someone that you would like to get to know i think it's okay as a woman to let them know that i'm available to talk to you right i'm available <laughs> you know that that i'm so glad you said that i'm available to talk to you because I think sometimes, and I've heard this before, that we t sometimes as Christian singles, as singles who have been independent women, we don't present ourselves as available. Like, and so I've always kind of, so I want to talk about that because it's like, okay, yeah, I'm independent. I'm single. I take care of myself. I've been trained to take care of myself. So no, I'm not waiting to enjoy a restaurant or live my life based on a man. But how do you balance that out, that being available, but yet being sure of yourself? I think it's knowing that I enjoy my company. So we, mm -hmm. I believe that we are bomb single women, right? Yeah. I've, I've traveled, I buy things, I do all of that. But all of those things don't mean that I don't want your companionship. Okay, because yeah. a red bottom can't give me testosterone on the phone. Okay, a red bottom cannot change my tire. And one of the things um, that I learned that my mother taught me um, before she passed away, my parents would have been married 50 years in December. Wow. And she told me this. She said, you can have all of the things, but you have to create a space for a man to feel like he belongs or that there is something for him to do for you. So you got, we got our own. We're doing all of the things, but we have to create a place that is healthy. Mm -hmm. So not that we are damsels in distress or we can't do things on our own, but I want to invite you in. I could do this. I could take myself to the nicest restaurants. I went to Paris mm -hmm. for my birthday. I can't write myself little nice mm -hmm. notes. Right? Yeah. 
I can't I can't call on my call myself and check and see how I'm doing, you know, um, today. So I think creating those place, there is something that you can't do for yourself that you may want a companion to do for you and inviting that space in a healthy manner to say, you can do that. Come on yeah. and do that. I don't just need you for your money. I got my own. But you can come on and do this other stuff I don't want. You can take out the trash. Amen. <laughs> and to me, there are other needs. I was having this conversation recently about, you know, strong, independent women. And a lot of times we present it as if we don't need a mate. We don't need someone in our lives. And it's not that it's not that I don't need you. I don't need you to I may not need you to pay the bill, but I do need your emotional support. I need to feel safe. I need to feel that I'm valuable to you. I need to feel, you know, that that assurance. And so I think sometimes we, because we're so used to having this, this presentation of I'm a strong woman, especially as African American women. Yeah, I got it. I can I can go out now and work. I'm making the same amount of money. I can, you know, bring the bacon home. I can fry it in a pan for some of y'all who cook, and. I can make it into a full meal. Right. And it's like, the guy is still saying, okay, well, where do I fit in this equation? Exactly. Exactly. Because if you don't need a man, then why would he come? If you don't create a space for him to do things, even emotionally, then you got it all together. And I feel like in their DNA, they have to feel some type of need, not a desperation. Cause we ain't we're not doing strange yeah. things for attention, but they need, I, I believe that's a part of their emotional makeup to feel wanted and needed and that they can be the man to man. So come on, sir, and do these things. Yeah, in a healthy manner. it's in their innate uh, ability. They're, they're to be, they're hunters, they're providers, they're protectors, and you got to create that space. And, but here's one thing I think sometimes, and I don't know if I was reading your post, but Oh, yeah, you had it on your post. I want to go to this. And I'm reading all y'all comments. So stay engaged in the comments because somebody said, even for Hispanic women, it's the same thing. You don't present yourself as desperation. And I think sometimes as single women, I want to I want to go back, though, to that creating a space because I think sometimes people get married. So here's a nugget for the married couples. You get married and you don't create a space for your husband. Mm. You get married. And when I look back on my divorce and I always people, you know, in my intimate life, when I'm talking to somebody and I've said it publicly, like if you ask me, where did I fail? Because it takes two people for a relationship to fail. A lot of times people say, oh, it's just one person. One person may take the blame, but both people had a part in the failure. Mm. And when I look back, I realize that in some areas I didn't create a space. Mm. I didn't create the space. I, I was I was so independent and felt like, hey, you good, I'm good, do your thing, I'll do my thing. And I didn't create that space of companionship. I didn't create the space of, you know, that let me fix your plate. And it doesn't make me any less of a woman to fix your plate. So I think for the couple married people on here, don't forget to still create the space. You created the space when y'all were dating. You got to create the space even in your relationship. That's just my nugget for the married couples. All right. Come on, let's go back to this. So in creating the space though, and not being desperate. I think sometimes we mix up the roles and try to be a wife before it's time. Oh, yeah. And you, I saw on your post, you put, be his peace. Uh, you know, where everybody's like, be his peace. But if I'm not his wife, how far do I go on this? And, and I love how you said it. You probably go, if you can remember, I want to be that presence. I want to be that fragrance. That I'm not trying to be his peace, although I should bring peace to his life. But I want to be that fragrance that he misses when I'm not in the room. I was like, oh. And so that, I think sometimes as singles, we struggle in that capacity because, you know, you've heard it preached. You're already a wife. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am. But how do I not give somebody who doesn't deserve that wife's side of me before it's time? Ooh, that's, that's really good. Cool. That's, that's a good question. I think we have to remember that we're somebody's wife, but we're not legally or even spiritually this person's wife until the Lord says. I'm, I am really big on our autonomy 
in singleness, meaning that you are your own person, that there are certain things that we should have our own foundation first. So if you don't have your foundation of peace, if you are a tragedy, my presence is not going to do nothing for you. You are a ticking time bomb. So there is nothing that I can do for you. I want to be an additive to your life, just like I want you to be an additive to my life. So I think that when we're coming together, when we're dating, first of all, we need to be mindful of Holy Spirit with things that we should should and shouldn't be doing. Now, there are some things that come natural to certain women. So I can't really give you a list. You may really enjoy cooking. That's how you show people that you love them. You, But in my opinion... You don't need to be cooking for nobody seven days a week and that's not your husband because he need to have something to look forward to. And you need to have a life and do something else with your time instead of catering to a man that is not yours yet. And I believe that sometimes we delay rings and we delay the, the legalism of it all because we're so busy, so quick trying to prove ourselves. You can't prove yourself to somebody who already doesn't know your worth. I'm not, I'm not, we're, we're interviewing each other. I'm not trying to prove myself and make you choose me. We're bo we're both in an interview process. So are you capable of being my husband? Because that's a high calling. I don't come. I don't have no shabby daddy. Okay. I, I don't have no shabby father. So I need to know. You waiting for plates and laundry? I need to know that you can protect and provide like the father that I that I will be coming from up under. Right. Yeah. So I think we have to remind ourselves it's not just you proving it's an interview process for both of you. And when you feel yourself doing too much, trying to, I just got to prove my love. No, you don't. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. Either they see the value or they don't. Now, there are certain things we do. There are different love languages and how we show each other. We appreciate them. But uh, if you ain't eating before now, I, I pray that you're not starving until I, I come. I pray that, because that's a life skill, okay? <laughs> but I love that. I think so many times as singles, we get into the, because, you know, uh, there's the whole, there are more women than men. And so you're trying to feel like you've been outdoing your sister. Like, but I don't have to prove myself to you, like, I don't have to prove it. Like either you're for me or you're not. And the Holy Spirit is going to confirm that. But I'm not trying to prove myself to you. Like if I'm already in the proving phase, when is it? Then you start getting into the place where you start feeling like you're not enough. And you're more than enough. But you're trying to prove yourself to somebody who can't even really sometimes even understand your value. You're trying to see, you know, they say it like this. Louis Vuitton never goes on sale because they're not trying to prove their value to anybody. You know, you rarely see a Louis Vuitton commercial because they're not trying to prove their value. So advertising in a certain way is like, I don't need to prove my status to you. And so many times we almost diminish who we are because we're trying to prove ourselves to somebody who doesn't understand and it's just going to treat us like another bag. When I'm not another bag that you're trying to, you know, pick, I, I am the real deal. I am the prize. I am the ultimate. Come on now. I love that. I love that. You know, I saw one of the guys put in the comment about how their ex didn't create a, a space for them and how that was important to them. And even one of the girls said that her late husband enjoyed fixing her plate. And so it doesn't mean that you're not a lady and it doesn't mean that you don't have times of caring for that person. They ought to know that they're, they're special to you, but be careful of giving wifely duties before you're made a wife. You know, old school, they used to say, uh, don't, why should he buy the cow when he get the he milk? He can get the milk for free. Come on. You know, and so it's being really wise in those decisions. Okay, I want to I want to shift a little bit because I saw somebody put a comment on here like, uh, oh, I hope I can find it. It was really about um, kind of being a, a, like a, a Christian and not feeling comfortable in the flirting space the, you know, maybe even taking the shot, you know, making the first one, sliding in the DMs. Like, you know, as Christian girls, we don't do that. How do I, you know, that whole, uh, you know, that saved and single, I'm, I'm saved, I'm single, I'm successful. How do we balance that out and still 
tap into our femininity and desire to date and desire to go out and, you know, you, you still want to be pursued. Mm-hmm. How do you balance that out? I think one of the biggest things is we have to take the mindset away for from um, doing things for other people or even to be seen and showing up fully present as ourselves. Yeah. I say that because a lot of Christian girls don't even have a life. I could tell you what you do all week. You go to work, you go to church, you may go to school. That's it. And I could, those are the three places that you go. You need, you don't need a date. You need a life. When you really begin to unpack the abundance in your life and you start to, I, I wear sequence a lot because I believe that you can start your own party. When you really start living your life, people will want to live your life with you. So I say that to say, show up in every space as yourself. Own, embrace your femininity. How do you like to dress? How do you like your hair? Okay, I've done that already, Jen. Then engage in social uh, atmosphere or conversations. So I am not a girl of, I'm not sliding in nobody's DM. That's just my personal preference. I'm not telling you it's, it's sin. I'm not telling you it's wrong. But for me, I believe in, I'm going to leave a breadcrumb. Okay? So I'm going to like your picture. I'm going to like your picture so you know I like your picture. I may leave even leave a, a comment or two, right? You may say something in your stories and I say, oh, that's a nice tie or something. I'm going to leave the breadcrumbs and I'm going to open the door. And if you demand from me, you're going to walk through the door because I'm a different type of woman. So I can't do everything for you because then we just not going, we not going to mess. Right. So I need you to take some, I need you to have some, some ground, <laughs> some ownership, you oh. know, read it. But I'm going to say, you going to know what's up. I ain't liking three and four pictures for nothing. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna leave some. I love. I'm gonna leave some breadcrumbs. I'm gonna keep it classy, but I'm gonna leave some breadcrumbs. You know, uh, what is the story? Is it a uh, uh, Ruth? He left some. You know, he said, leave some for her to pick up. Leave some extra, like yes. you know, when you're out there, make sure you got some extra for her to pick up. So, ladies, it's okay to leave a little breadcrumb to show that you took notice. Yeah, I noticed. Mm-hmm. But don't be desperate, you mm-hmm. know. And I think it's it's really just it's okay to leave some breadcrumbs. I want to go back to this about a life. And I think it's so key. And I have to say, I've been guilty of it. I've been guilty of going to work, going to church, coming home. I'm a homebody just by nature. I'm an introvert by nature. And so um, you can get caught in that cycle of work, home, church. And then if you have kids as a single person, work home, church, the kids, work home, church, the kids, work home, church, the kids. And so when my kids got of age, you know, they're 25, 19, I'm like, what in the world am I supposed to do? My girlfriends, some of them got married, so they're living their life. And I'm saying, where, what, where's my life? Now, I'm still a homebody, but I started doing things that I enjoy a little bit more so that I could get out of this thing of he not going to find you sitting on your couch. And he may not find you at church. Now, that don't mean you go to the club, but you at least go. I will take myself to dinner in a minute. I'll take myself to dinner. I enjoy time with my girlfriends. But it's getting yourself to the point where you say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break the routine. You know, I, I made a point this year, and I've, I've really been trying to. I don't even know if people around me notice it. Like I've been more strategic about how I actually go to work. Like I normally dress for work, but like you know, today I, I was like, oh, I'm cute. I put me a little outfit together. Normally I just put an outfit together for Sundays because that's when people are gonna see me. Sundays, Wednesdays, any other day is like jeans and a, and a sweatshirt. I'm in my office. But I've been more intentional because you never know. You never know when when he may see a picture. And so, so how do we break that routine of, of trying to gain a life when we really have gotten into a rut, and especially with COVID? Like, how do you get that life? 
But I think it goes back to what you said, joining clubs, doing things that you really like to do. I think for women, going to the places where men go. And I'm not saying as a way of, you know, trying to trap a man one-on-one, -on -one, but they, they're not, they, maybe they're not at choir rehearsal. Maybe they're at the game. Maybe, maybe they're at the basketball game. So maybe you and your girlfriend to say, we want to do something different. Let's go to a basketball game. Let's go to a football game. Let's go. Let me tell you where the ball is be at. The ball is be golfing. Okay, guys. <laughs> I'm just saying. Top just golf. Saying. They, they golf. So maybe you need to go to top golf first and work on your swing, <laughs> and then you know, then go to the golf course. Uh, they say that business deals are made, but I think it's expanding your you're you're expanding your your life your yeah. circle it doesn't mean you got to go and get all these new friends but ex exposure stretches you yeah and so when you've been exposed when the guy comes and he wants to take you on a date you're not far into the place because you've been exposed yeah That's you know and then see and this is how to me this is how you protect yourself from getting with the wrong person because see, if you never go, if you don't have a life and you don't go out and you meet a person who really doesn't have your best interest at heart, but he showed you a good time because you've never treated yourself, then you'll fall into a place with somebody who wasn't for you because you didn't have a life of your own. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, this is your thing. So I'm like, I mean, no, you got it. You That's the truth. Exposure stretches you and when you're not used to treating yourself well you'll be tricked by a counterfeit who dangles things in front of your face that's why you have to expose yourself that's why you have to get a hobby so you're cultured you're 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 well versed at different things so when somebody comes my mother used to do this all the time she used to tell me every day you look cute today this is when i was in elementary school you look cute today. So when that little boy tells you that you're cute, you tell him that your mother already told you. I'm telling you, single woman, you look good today. Your life is popping today. So when that man comes along, you already popping. How can you make your life turn up? Like in a way that is holy and acceptable. I'm not telling you to do no strange, crazy stuff, but there are some things that you can enjoy your life and it's not sin. Why are you waiting for a man to take you to, to see the world when you don't even have a passport to see it? You don't need, you haven't even given yourself access to this abundance of life. You don't have to wait for another person to show you a good time. You start having a good time on your own and then you select who you're going to have a good time with. But it's the lack of exposure really limits our perspective and then we begin to get bitter and then we begin to to get disgruntled with God because we're not living a life that he's already given us access to waiting for a partner to come along ah, I love that you get disgruntled with God and you get upset with God because you're waiting for somebody to come along when he's already giving you access to live the abundant life and and I think that some of it is it comes with the the social the social culture and the training and the what people have said like girl you gotta wait for a man I, that's an add to my life yeah. but nothing is missing in my life that's why the Bible says it's really two whole individuals coming together and so many times we want to take two halves and make a one but the math the math, the math of God is that it's two whole individuals coming together for a greater purpose and when you are whole and you have exposed yourself and you're enjoying life then that person can be attracted he's going to be more attracted to you because he can see you enjoying life he's going to be attracted like you said by that fragrance because he's like oh wait a minute she's enjoying life then when he holds a conversation with you and he starts talking about things he's like oh oh you're cultured oh oh you Oh, you've been to you've been to Broadway. You you've been to productions. You you enjoy the art. You you've been to the museum. Yes, I've been. Now it'd be great to go with you, but this is not my first time. This is you know, this is not my first time. <laughs> not my my first time. You know, I was telling some. I went to Greece for my fortieth with my with um one my best friend, and we we did Greece. We did China. We traveled. We went to Italy. Like traveling. Let me get on a plane. 
but it's that pat get your passport because see you know, many times we're asking god for something that we don't even have the capacity to handle yeah you want the husband but you haven't expanded your capacity to handle the husband do you have your passport is your credit straight how are you doing on your own money management why would god send somebody into your life when your life is chaotic and you have not fully managed what you have just saying i mean why would he set his son up like that right like he, the man of god is his child too right so yeah. he don't need to just be with just anybody and then i also think about when we do shift into marriage it's a different dynamic i don't want to grieve a season that i didn't live well when i have children when i have a husband i want to be able to be a wife right meaning that if i don't do lives anymore if i'm not able to travel you know like we used to do because i'm being a wife and a mother i don't want to grieve this season because i wasted this season I don't know. Every season has a war. There are benefits and sacrifices to every season. So when I get married, I don't know what his assignment is going to be. Why? I, I, I can't say what we're going to be doing. So I need to live this season well where I am. Single means unattached, right? It means unmarried. A synonym for single means free. That means I can do all the things with God, how he wants me to do them. I don't know what that season is going to be. So I'm not going to grieve this season because I didn't live it well. Don't waste your singleness because it's different. It's a different dynamic and you don't know what that's going to hold. So you're waiting, wasting time now when you don't know when you want to get this time back. Come, Jen, you are, you are dropping some nuggets. Like don't, don't waste the season right now. I mean, that is like, and it's so true because that next season is going to require a new set of skills. It's going to require sacrifice. And when I became senior pastor in 2018, people didn't understand when I said I didn't want to get married. I didn't want to get married from 20, like, well, at the end of 2017, start of 2018. And I was serious. Like, I don't want to get married for three to five years. And I said, and everybody was like, why would you say that? I said, because I got to focus on building the culture of new life. And when I get married, I want to be able to be a wife. I don't want to be like, oh, I got I to gotta send this email. I want to have some things positioned so that I can still continue the call of God on my life. But I can enjoy being a wife. I can enjoy my husband. You know, he may be a businessman and be like, can you? Can you go with me somewhere Monday through Friday? Got my laptop. I'm going. I'll be back to church on Sunday. <laughs> but I'm not going to waste this season of being single. Like, I don't have to ask for anybody's approval. I, I, If nothing else about being single that I love is, geez, if God is all right with it, I could do it. Yeah. I don't have to hide no purses in the car. <laughs> I don't have to go through going to a restaurant that I really don't want to go to because that's what he wants to do and trying to suffer to find something to eat. If I want to eat, I can fix me a steak. If I want to on a day off, if I want to just be in my pajamas all day with my hair tied up on the top of my head with my bonnet on, oh God, I can do it. When you get a man, you got to, you got to take your hair down and put some, you know, all gotta get it together <laughs> I mean, enjoy it enjoy the season because so oftentimes we're either grieving what we lost in the last season yeah. or we are uh it, it there's an other side and i'm trying to figure out the right word where we're too we're so anxious about what's to come yeah. that we're not enjoying the now mm -hmm. and so then you find yourself grieving what you lost grieving what you don't have or being overly anxious about the possibility or when is it going to come and the bible says be anxious for nothing, nothing. because mm -hmm. everything is going to happen in the right season at the right time y'all are lighting up this chat yes ks ruth the bonnet on saturday mornings most of the time I wake up if I don't have church and I am going to stay in my good little bonnet until I get ready to, um, you know, to change. Now, if I'm, I'm not going to go out the house in my bonnet. Right. 
I'm, and if I was in a relationship, I'm not going to walk around the house. This for the married folks. Take that bonnet off. That dude didn't even like that bonnet when y'all were dating. He don't like the bonnet now. Now, when y'all were dating, you'd be all cute. You know, you go over there and you like, I saw somebody put something on Instagram. Like, I didn't want to tie my wig down. Like, you know, now you didn't got off. You come home, you put the wig on the, sh- this is not a wig. It's a wig. <laughs> You put the wig on the shelf. You looking like a uh, sealy and color purple. Come on now. And then you want to know why he's not happy. Okay, this is for singles. Let me get to the singles. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help all of y'all. I, I'm trying to help all of y'all. Yes, you got to put, lo- you should put lotion on your feet now though, Sonia. Sonia said you got to put lotion on your feet when you have a man. You should put lotion on your feet now. You all the time. Put lotion on your feet right now. Okay. Um, I, I'm big on that. I'm big on putting lotion on your feet. See, you ought to care for yourself now. You know, the Bible talks about that, you know, you be always ready and and, and that preparation. So you're thinking these things and habits that, you know, are going to change once you get married. But if you don't care for yourself now, then how are you going to, you think just because a man showed up, you're going to just start caring for yourself automatically? No, it don't work like that. So care for yourself now. I was getting my nails done. I, I get my I get my pedicure. Do all that now before you get to the next state. All right, I want to talk about this. Okay. Uh, I don't know if he's watching. Sometimes he keeps in, but my uh, I've known him for years. He is a financial expert, and so he made a statement about dating and money, and that while he's working on his financial future, they're kind of. And I'm not saying it verbatim, so don't get me. And I'm not going to say his name because I don't want him to get me because I'm not saying it ver- verbatim. But about, you know, I'm not just going to spend a certain amount of money. I'm not going to try to go and do these expensive dates and all of that. Because I'm working on the financial future, I'd rather build wealth than waste $300 on a date for somebody that I don't even know if I'm going to talk to in two months. How... Cause I, and I see that sometimes as single women, we go to date, we expect this man to be at this level. If a guy says, I got $100 to date you, do you go on the date? <laughs> see, I think for me, I'm upset that you put a price tag instead of creativity on the date. Because those of us who have eaten well, it's not about a five-star white tablecloth for me. It's about an experience. So the fact that you're just thinking money instead of creativity is an issue for me. Because I can take myself out to dinner. Come on, Dr. Ivy, we can go to dinner right now and go to somewhere fancy and lit. I've done that, right? Most of us have done that. So my thing is, where's your creativity? Because it's not about a dollar. You can be a cre- be creative and give me a memorable experience for under fifty dollars. You can do a, a homemade picnic in a, a in a um a park that has a ama- amazing scenery. We could drive to the places that we overlook the water, and you have all of these things. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like this is amazing. So for me, it's not about the dollar amount is where is your creativity, bro? Because I that's know it. I, I think that's so key. And and again, that's why I'm not calling his name because I, I didn't hear full verbatim, but it was about I, I'm only gonna spend a certain amount of money because I don't know what the date is gonna look like. But that effort and creativity over coins, because I can take myself to those places. But I want to know that you thought about it, that you 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 thought about me. You know, I was telling somebody, it's not the now I do like a good experience. So let me not say that. I, I do like a good experience. And I do like to, I like fine dining. I, I do. I'm not gonna listen. <laughs> I'm not gonna act like no, I, I like a good experience. I, I like a good look, good, good little fancy. Let me get dressed up. Let me let me get cute. I like that. But your creativity, because see, you could take me to a fine dining restaurant and I can have a horrible experience and not date you again because you're rude to the waiter. Yes. Or you're overanalyzing what I'm about to order because 
this is a far stretch. And so you did it, but it was more than what you could do. And so now you make me feel uncomfortable because I want an appetizer. I want a salad and I want an entree. I mean, all of it. And if I feel fancy, I want a dessert. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But the creativity. And so for the brothers that are listening, Where is your creativity and your thought process? And no, I don't want the experience if you're divorced. I don't want the experience that you share with somebody else. I want you to be in tune to me and what I like and what I don't like, because it lets me know that you're thinking about me, that you've thought about, you heard, you were listening in the conversation and you heard the kind of music that I like. And so when I get in the car, that song is playing on the radio. You thought about me come, come brothers i'm giving y'all some tips right now huh? that's real literally because most of us have given ourselves the experience so for me do you even know what my favorite food is like how is this restaurant um authentic to our experience together because bro i just had carbonara in rome fresh like no shade but shade like <laughs> So, I mean, because I think sometimes we use the money thing as a cop out and you just mm-hmm. go to these fancy restaurants because you don't want to really think about an entire experience. And I just want us to expand what that looks like, like yeah. for that is curtailed to that particular day. So for me, it's thoughtfulness over coins every day, all day. Thoughtfulness and creativity over coins. I like that. I like that. I like that. Okay, we got to talk about sisterhood. We've been on here for 42 minutes. Hey, I want y'all to do this real quick. Put some questions in the comments. I'm going to just have a little fun right now. Put some questions in the comments uh, because we're going to wrap this up real soon. Put some questions in the comments. Jen, I have enjoyed this conversation. I'm trying to go over all my notes. Uh, We got to talk about sisterhood. But I want to talk about, before we talk about sisterhood, is how important is it that as singles we set non-negotiables like knowing your non-negotiables before you get in the dating process how important is that it's uh, it's almost the top tier importance because if you don't know your non-negotiables you're going to compromise Mm -hmm. and i believe that the enemy dangles desperation over over our heads. Like you're never going to have this or doubt. That's the better word. Doubt over our heads so that we can settle for what's presented before us instead of waiting for God's best that he has for us. So non-negotiables is, is that's the standard. If yeah. you don't know what you will and will not accept, you will accept anything. Yeah. But you, see, and then... Your non-negotiables, don't you think they have to have some substance to them? Like, you can't have a non-negotiable, like, he needs to be over six feet. That's not a, that's not a valid non-negotiable. Now, that's I, a preference. That's a, that's a preference. It's conditional. But to me, a non-negotiable is, does he love God? Because he don't even know how to, how, can he pray for you? I, I remember uh, one of, and I always talk about this, uh, and I have her on here sometimes, love love McPherson. She's a relationship expert. And she said, when you think about relationships, dating somebody and being co- in a committed re- relationship, is this the person that you want to give the authority to, to, to make a decision for your life? Because if you marry that person, that person has the power to make the final decision whether you're going to live or die. If you're in a place where you are not able to make the decision for yourself, can you trust their decision making that they're going to make a decision in concert with what your life speaks and what your life is about? And so many times we make preferences and conditional things, non-negotiables, and we have no substance to our non-negotiables. Uh, absolutely that that is spot on the non-negotiables should be the contents and not the packaging right now are there are some things that you desire but especially for women i don't think we understand the weight in us getting married when you get married you are literally taking you're laying like you're intertwining your legacy with someone you're literally taking on their dna to reproduce this person's children in the earth you're literally saying i'm dropping the name of my father my heritage and i'm taking on your name for my future 
the man that a woman marries has the ability to either take her further to her destiny or to cap her off in the places that she was created to overflow, right? It's that serious. So it's literally a matter of life and death. So I cannot align myself. Jen, hold on, hold on, Jen, <laughs> hold on. You keep doing this and I, I'm not ready for the next statement. I, I need to just sit with this. But I mean, that's true and I've heard of it. I just need to sit with how you said it, that the man that you marry will either take you to the next level or cap your destiny. Literally. How many times have we seen people get married and get stuck in their purpose? They're not moving forward. Their personalities have changed because they have been aligned with the wrong one. I, <laughs> there is so much on the inside of us that I need to be partnered with someone that's going to help me multiply. That's why one, we have wounds, not just to birth babies, but to multiply. So I need to be cognizant of the seed from the man that I am multiplying in the earth and in the spirit. So that's how people be crazy and don't be doing the right stuff because they just settle with it. No, 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 no. This is my life. This is my legacy. This is my future, right? This is like, as a woman, when I say that I'm submitting to you as the head, there is God, then there's you at the head of my household, right? So when you say no, I got to be okay with that. I have to be able to trust your leadership. I have to be able to trust your heart. I have to be able to trust your vision. So baby, that is more than just you being six feet with a six pack. I need to know that you are tapped in to what God has for me in my life. And I need to know that we can equally submit because yes. if God has given me something that is for our destiny, yes. I need to know that you're man enough to say, I'm going to submit. I'm going to yield myself under to under you in this moment for the forward movement of the mission at hand. Because submission is I am surrendering under the mission that God has for us. And so if in this season, it's something that I'm called to do, I need you to be that kind of man to be like, no, babe, you got to do it. But you got to be able to not just see my body. I need you to see what's in my spirit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I don't need you to see my body. I don't need you to just see my curves. I need you to see and be able to see what's in my spirit and tap into those areas of my life that stretch me and yes. take my... Woo. So this is something, and here's the thing. I know I have I have a personal thing about online dating. I've seen it work for people. I mean, it, it's not gonna work for me if it works for me. But see, we cannot minimize who we date to a swipe left. Mm. We cannot minimize who we date to just swiping the options and then hitting, you know, engage. It's bigger than that. Yeah. Can this person pull you up. Or is this person going to cap you off? Cap and you. sometimes will he pull you down? Because yeah. he, he can't handle the capacity of the woman that God has called you to be. Yes. It's just that serious. This is serious business. Man, y'all, this is out. Listen, I'm trying to read y'all comment. I am trying to read all of them. But uh, Jen is like dropping this. <laughs> Okay, so let's let's talk about the sisterhood, and and I'm gonna close out with this because I try to, I try not to keep this over an hour, but this is so good. This is so good. You know, holidays. We, we're at, you know Valentine's Day. Everybody in love. Folks that don't even really like each other gonna be trying to act like they in love. And here you are, single, and it's like, okay, do I have to go to another Valentine? But how important is your sister circle in those se single seasons of your life? Because I think many times we miss the value of our sisterhood mm -hmm. to help us in those single seasons. So I want to talk about that. And it's kind of like a dual thing, like balancing out the holidays as a single, mm -hmm. but also bringing in the, the value and the importance of your sisterhood. I think we have to get to a place, especially as single women, that first we value sisterhood because sometimes we value romantic relationships over platonic relationships. And they are very, very important. Some of us who have been in relationships that were long term that didn't work out, 
that sister that you kept with you, she still was your sister. She rolled with you through the ups and the downs. And we have to get out of this mindset that we're going to put sisterhood on the back burner when we get booed up. So that's number one. We got to value our relationship. Stop being raggedy. Stop every time somebody pays you some attention, you you don't, nobody can find you. you. You don't answer your phone for your sisters because you finally got attention from a man. So first of all, we have to value it. Second of all, we have to know our triggers for ourselves and have a safe place to talk about those triggers, right? So it's okay if you, it's February, you probably have walked into CVS or Walmart and you've seen all the balloons and things of that nature and you may feel a certain type of way. And also being single during this pandemic has been a lot because you realize no, I'm single for real. Cause I can't go outside. I, could, I can't do the things that I would usually do, yeah. but being able to articulate those triggers in a safe place is monumental. So they'll be able to cover you. They'll be able to lift your arms. They'll be able to give you the scriptures when you feel like you are hopeless. Right. And I think also knowing they'll remind you of the season that you're in, in your singleness. So I believe that there are different layers of um, singleness. And, and what I mean by that is just because you're single doesn't mean you're available. You may be in a healing season. You may have just come out of something that was so traumatic and so toxic that you need time just to recover. And your sisters are going to help you to recover. I also find it very valuable to surround your sister, surround yourself with sisters that are not just singles, but also wives. I know sometimes there is some tension and some, you know, gets a little weird, but my wife tribe has affirmed me in a way that is just ridiculous in this single season, letting them, letting me, reminding me that I'm not desperate, my, reminding me of the value and the power that I have, that I have something to offer. And also, because we don't like this part, giving me feedback when there are areas in my life that need some improvement. Shout out to Wives and Waiting. My, my homegirls, they gonna tell me, you being mean, that's not nice. You gotta get that together. Why would you post that? Why would you say that, right? And being that filter that you need. So knowing your triggers, embracing your community, um, having accountability, and knowing the season that you're in. When you really spend time with God, and I don't mean to get extra deep or churchy, but I really oh. feel like it's important. Like asking God, where do you want me right now? Because just because you're single doesn't mean you should be dating, Right? Yeah. Some, some people literally that swipe left or right could be you, your life. And I'm not trying to be, um, you know, go off the deep end, but he may not want you entertaining somebody right now. He may want you in a building season where you put all of your attention on him. The Bible says that the single season, the unmarried person, their time is to the Lord. Yeah. It's undivided. That's what it says. So sometimes we're so busy trying to figure out what's next that we're not planted in what's now. Are you being obedient to the season that God has you in right now? That's so good. I, I mean, I, I I totally agree. And I love the part where you said, you know, just because I'm single doesn't mean I'm available. Because sometimes you you got to really work on that wholeness. But you, you said so much, like the accountability piece. Um one of my, you know, one of my best friends, we, when we became friends, we started this accountability that if nobody knows where I am in the world, cause you know, we grown, we're trying to dip off. She know where I'm at. She, she knows we have this deal. Like if you get on a plane, I get on a plane, even though she's married, I'll still say, Hey, I'm going here. Cause I may not, I may not tell my kids, I may not tell my mom, but she knows my, my tribe knows where I am. They know some things. And you got to have a tribe that you feel safe with. Yeah. Because there is a, in order to correct some things in your life, like those triggers and being aware of your triggers and correct some dysfunction in your life, you got to have people that you can be totally like, this is who I am, yeah. no judgment, but allow them to speak into your life and say, all right, that's out of line. All right, you got to get it together. But there's an honesty piece in your sisterhood circle. And so it's so important. And I think 
we we start devaluing because we think we think about the old mothers and the old single women in the church that we feel uncomfortable saying that as a single i'm really seeking god like yeah. I'm, I'm not playing about my relationship with god i'm not playing about my service in the kingdom of god it's not you know i, I think we are with that as we're bringing generations up and as you know this group of singles you got to see God. You yeah. got to see God. And and to me, you going on these dates on Tinder and Bubble and Black and all that. And nobody. First of all, the Holy Ghost probably told you don't go. But you, I just want to go out. I just want a free meal. It ain't worth it. Mm-hmm. It ain't. It's not worth it. Mm-hmm. Okay, a couple questions from the audience. That, that was good. Okay, one, one person says real quick, how did you find your tribe? Um, so I believe the first place we start is in our church, Mm -hmm. exploring the ministries that are available in our churches, um, and aligning ourselves with people who have the same value system as us. So for me, I actually found, um, an amazing pair of ministry online. Um, and it was just sister conversation. Hey, I think you should come. And that's what I mean by being open to different yeah. social things, right? Like, I'm not telling you to do anything that is against the uh, the will and the word of God, but you, it's okay. If you, if you go to a Christian something at another church or, you know, wherever that does not conflict with what you have going on. So that was how I found it. I believe that we spent a lot of time online and i'm not necessarily talking about online dating but there are a lot of different clubs and groups that are healthy please stop these toxic dating groups right but there are groups that are healthy that ministries that are healthy that you can be you can be a part of so align yourself with the values of what you see around see what's available in your area we have so many churches in this good old United States, I promise you that there is somebody that that has a community ministry that you can be a part of without leaving your home church that, that aligns with your interests. So that's what worked for me. I found a pair of ministry. I got tricked because, <laughs> and I say I got tricked because the name of our group is um, Why I've Been Waiting. And it's not about single women, but I told them, I ain't looking for nothing else. Like, I'm good. Like, I don't, I don't need that. <laughs> And one of the girls was like, no, we want you to come talk about confidence. And I've been with them for over right. seven years, right? So I think right. online, community, church, yeah. exploring that. And being open to connections. I think a lot yeah. of times as women, we can get to the place where we're like, I'm, I don't need no new friends. I'm not taking applications for new friends. And I, and I get it because, you know, sometimes you can get some cattiness in the in, world. But don't close yourself off from one of the greatest blessings. My tribe, I think I met them maybe six years ago. Oh, wow. You know, like for Gil and I met in 2014. Um, Kim Roxy, she owns a makeup line. Somebody actually met her and brought her to the church to do makeup for us for the women's conference. She's a part of my tribe. Keisha, I met her on Instagram. She's a florist and I had her do something at the church and that's my tribe. And we always say how dope our tribe is. Like our tribe, give us an empty room. We're going to throw a whole party. We're going to bring your flowers. You're going to have our makeup. You're going to, you know, somebody going to plan an event because our tribe is dope in just how we look at life, how we look at business. But I, I didn't close myself off because those, those are some people that came into my life later. And I don't discount the people that used to be in my life. Right. But in this season of my life, that's the tribe that I need as I'm moving forward. And so I think that's good. Here's one question. Oh, I got one more. I got, can Go I add to that real quick? Sure. Also, I have this thing called shooting your sisterhood shot. Like that person that you've seen in church that y'all keep going to the same, you know, say hello. Stop being mm-hmm. weird. Like, we already got something in common. That person that you keep commenting on their status and, and y'all have some mutuality and it seems like y'all can, you know, y- y'all are so worried about a man. Shoot your shot with your homegirl. It works. I promise. Compliment yeah. each other. And and like you said, just be open to new people. Yeah. And, you know, like for me, I met some amazing women when I uh, joined Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and there are group. And normally, I would be an introvert, and 
you know, we were working on something and it was an opportunity to, to, to work on our, our presentation video. And I did it. And I found another group of women that I'm, I'm, I enjoy their company. And, you know, we go out to dinner and, you know, sometimes they be like, no, nah, Pastor, you can't come. And it's like, <laughs> you, know, you coming. We got you. you. You coming. And I'm sitting there and I'm just enjoying watching them enjoy themselves. But it, it opened me up. And so, again, don't be so closed off. This is an opera. This is a season of great opportunity and possibility. And don't get so caught up where you're praying for the man that you don't have accountability in your life in the season and you're not building the relationships that God has already brought into your care. I like Sister Vicky's question. It's up there. Uh, it's it's kind of up, uh, Lisa. Uh, my single sisters keep dimming their light based on being afraid they will run the guy off if they ask tough questions. Oh, this is good. Can you speak to this, please? Because I'm married and I don't want to be insensitive but she's noticing them dim their light. And I know as singles, we can dim our light. Let's talk about this. And then we're going to wrap this up. I think for me, if they're afraid of the hard questions, then they're not the man for you. I, I think that being in a, a, a relationship or building something or even interviewing somebody warrants hard questions. Like it warrants that. But I also think that we have to have those hard conversations with some tact. Right. So one, I think we need to really evaluate the quality of men that they're asking the hard questions to mm -hmm. and then asking themselves, am I OK with walking away from this if this is not the best fit for me? Because that's a part of singleness, too. Sometimes a good guy, the good man ain't always your man. He may be good to someone he's else, good for me. but he's not good for me. And guess what? That's OK you'll be fine. You, yeah. You're not missing out on anything. But when you dim your light, you're going to regret it playing small. Because a part of being true to myself means showing up fully as myself all the time. Yeah, I'm not. So like for me, and I'm sure for you, Dr. I, if you say, if somebody comes to me, well, like, well, I don't really believe in women in ministry. Bye. I mean, I don't, there is nothing for us to yeah. talk about. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to go. That's just like somebody po posting on my Instagram. Delete. Because I'm <laughs> going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you. Um, but yeah, we've got to stop dimming our light. Now, to me, I think it's a way you ask the tough questions. Yep. And, and sometimes we get a bad rap because we're asking the tough questions without thinking about the timing. We're asking the tough questions without thinking about the tone and the tenor. And so it, it's misrepresenting us because our tone and our tenor is giving a different connotation to the question. And if you can't ask, ask the tough questions now, how are you going to ask the tough questions down the road? And to me, before you let your heart get into something, ask, ask the tough questions and be okay if the answer is not what you thought it should be. And I think sometimes we have to tell ourselves, I'm okay with the answer not being what I want it to be. I'm going to take um, one of the sisters put it and I'm going I'm to flip it. She was saying, I've been trying to shoot my shot. My, I've been trying to shoot my sisterhood shot, but who is a struggle to catch up with this person? It doesn't mean that that person may not be for you. It may mean that you have to glean from afar. There are some women that I consider them as sisterhood. They're part of she Rose League is a sisterhood. It is connecting women. This is why I'm bringing new voices. But just because you're empowered by something Jennifer Jen said tonight, that means Jen now needs to be your friend. And I think a lot of times we miss that, that I can still glean from women, even from afar. That's the great thing and the beauty about social media is that you can glean from afar. That person doesn't have to be right in your inner circle, but you can glean from afar and then watch how God will, those nuggets you take and they transform your life. And so everybody is not meant to be up close sisters. Every, not, everybody is not meant to be in your circle. And listen, you don't chase somebody down like, hey, let it go. Yeah. And for you, God will arrange it, but you don't have to chase somebody down. If it's for you, God will point it and make it. But sometimes we're trying to force relationships that we're only supposed to glean from afar. Mm -hmm. I've got sisters, my, my inner circle, we may text 
and we may, but we may not see each other for three months. It doesn't change our friendship. It doesn't change our sisterhood. Then I've got some people that I consider as sisters that I admire. I glean from them. I don't even know their cell phone them. I don't talk to them, but I follow them on Instagram. I'm, and I'm not trying to always make sure they comment on something I say. I may just look at them and be like, oh, that's dope. That's that's dope. I may look at how they did the makeup and be like, yo, that's dope. But I, that don't mean that we need to be friends. And I think we have to keep that in perspective. Okay. Is that sisterhood does not mean friendship. What do you think about that? Sisterhood does not mean friendship all the time. I agree. Because I'm not friends with everybody. But is it is it am I gleaning from that group? So that our lot, all of our lives are expanding. And then you want to make sure that you bring something to the table, whether it's a female sisterhood relationship or you're bringing something to the table in the relationship as somebody is looking at you to date. So, all right. Context, context and capacity is very important. Talk about that real quick. Context and capacity. Because it, 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 like you said, it may just be somebody from afar. They may not have the capacity. Like, really, do you have the capacity to have 30 best friends? No. Let's just be honest. So some, you're going to be up close. Some, it's going to be from afar. Some, they may not even know who you are. But that does not mean that we're not in the sisterhood of the kingdom. It does not mean we're not in the sisterhood of whatever our individual um, groups or businesses are. It's just, hey, girl, I see you. I admire you. I got something from you. But whether you are up close or far away, I respect what you're doing. And I think we get offended sometimes when the person doesn't have the capacity to pull you close. Like, Dr. I, you're a senior pastor. You don't have the capacity for someone to call you every day, five times a day. And it's not, not your all. kids. Like, and everybody doesn't have the capacity to be my friend. Right. Because to be my friend, you have to understand that I'm Dr. Irisha. I'm mom. I'm Irisha. And if you push me, Risha may show up. <laughs> well, Risha is Risha's the home girl. But if you push me, Riri may show up. And we don't like for Riri to show up. We want her to stay back in college and never come out. Okay. <laughs> but it's 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 can you have the do you have the capacity to handle the friendship? But also do you have the capacity? You can't, you got to know your capacity, but also know, do I have the capacity to be this person's friend? Because I may not have the capacity to be this person's friend. It's a lot that comes with being my friend. Yeah. It's a lot that comes with dating. It's a lot that comes with being in my inner circle. It's a lot that comes with working, being my assistant. And it's not that I'm difficult, but it's, it's a lot. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> I mean, Jesus had the 12 and then he had the three. And you got to find out where you fit. Like, if, if everybody has a different, different dynamic, and we got to be okay with the inner circle and with the people who are that just afar and the people that will just connect on a mutual level. It's okay. Jay, you just said it right there. <laughs> you got to know what category you in. He had the close ones, he had the disciples, and then there was the multitude. The multitude still got fed, but they weren't up close and personal. <laughs> That's it. Come on, Jen. I have enjoyed tonight. Here are a couple things I want to do. Y'all know we always do an offering on She Rose Lee. I'm a Jen, I'm gonna ask you to pray before we get off of here because uh, I heard you. I heard your prayer warrior too. And uh, I want you to pray for singles tonight. You know, I really, uh, I think this is, it has been encouraging because during times like Valentine's Day, Christmas, it's so easy for singles to lose heart and get discouraged. So I definitely want you to pray for them. But uh, y'all know, single, I would do She Rose League for absolutely free, but I never want to give miss an opportunity for you to sow a seed. And then we try to, you know, make sure we let people know we appreciate them for being our guests on She Rose League. How can you follow Jennifer? So let's put that up real quick and then we're going to do our offering. You can connect with Jennifer on Facebook at Jennifer Trotter or on Instagram at Lady Inspiration. I need to follow you on Instagram. That's I, I'm on Facebook, but I, I, I can keep up on Instagram. So I'm going to follow you. Um, 
but let's sow our seed tonight. You know, you may do twenty dollars. Do something to sow your seed. Let's sow into uh, the ministry of She Rose League. And for all of y'all saying, how can I connect with other women? She Rose League is having a conference this year. My mother used to host a women's conference, and so we are preparing our women's conference for April. I think it's twenty seventh through the twenty ninth. Uh, we're going to be probably in the next couple of weeks unveiling the theme and some of the guests. And I am super super excited about it. So I would love for you all to make plans to come to. Houston, but I want you to sow a seed into this ministry, into what God is doing in our lives. Sowing a seed for maybe you're sowing your seed and targeting it for that sisterhood circle on tonight. Maybe your seed, because I believe in targeting your seed. Maybe you're that that married uh, friend that you you're sowing a seed for your single sisters. Maybe you're sowing your seed so that as a single you can find that place and that you can really follow the direction of the Lord. But target your seed tonight so that you're living life to the full in 2022. And so the ways to give, they're going to put it on the screen. You can go to newlight.org/give. You can text New Light to 71441. You can give inside of the New Light app. If you have not downloaded, make sure you do that. You can also use Givelify. You can use Cash App, Dollar Sign, New Light Church, PayPal at New Light Church, uh, Zelle, uh, give at newlight.org. You can mail it in or you can drop it by the office and you can use the category She Rose League. Jen, I have enjoyed this. I hope you know, really, I hope I, I've enjoyed it. I have been like, Listen, when we get off, I'm going to keep you by five minutes. So I, we got to recap. But uh, this has been an absolute treat. So can you give us um, final words and then uh, pray over our ladies? Right before I turn it over to you, uh, Pastor B, my mom is doing an amazing thing with young girls. And I think we've got to start pouring into our young girls uh, ahead of time. We've got to make sure that they know how to handle situations. And so that's been a passion right now with Booth Girls Foundation. And so Me Academy is having personal development for, uh, and it's actually for men, for young boys and young girls ages 13 to 19, freshmen in college. Um, and so make sure you sign up today and are part of the personal development on this Saturday at 10 a.m. All right, Jen, I'm going to let you lose, let you give a final comment and pray for us. And y'all, uh, make sure you go out and follow her and check out all that she's doing. Thank you so much, Dr. I. This has been an amazing conversation, and I am just honored to be here. If I had any final words for singles, um, and even for people who are navigating sisterhood, is that God cannot not see you, right? You are not forgotten. I need you to know that he is your father and he is your friend and he will walk with you through every season. He is sovereign. God is sovereign. And God, I say this all the time, God will never play you. What does that mean? That means that whatever cards that he has given you to walk out in this life, he's going to make it good. He's going to make your hand good. So let's look to the father. Lord, we thank you and we honor you. We give your name the praise, Father. We thank you for moving all up and through this conversation. Yes. Lord, I ask you tonight that if there be any single that have watched this live, that feels discouraged, that is in despair, Father, I ask that you will give them hope again. In the name of Jesus, Father, I ask that you will provoke their hearts to let them know that you will never leave them, neither will you forsake them, that this single season is a sensitive time for them to walk together with you, Father. Lord, I ask that you will mend every broken heart. We come against the residue of bitterness in the name of Jesus. We come against despair in the name of Jesus, and we will hope again in you, for you are our King. You are the Lord of our heart. You are concerned about every emotion that we have, so we know, Father, that you see us and that you know, that you understand us and that you have not forgotten us. Father. So Lord, I ask you tonight that as we go to sleep, as we continue through this season of singleness through February, Father, that you will hold our hands in the tough times, that you will um, wipe our tears in the difficult times, that you will reignite the love in our hearts that we have for you, that we have for ministry and for the community that you will give us. Remind us that we are never alone and that you can never forsake us. It, it, it is in your matchless name that we pray. Jesus' name, the name that is above all names that we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you so much for that amazing prayer. And uh, it's so in tune. I've been teaching on really discouragement for the last and praying. Mm. So that was so in tune. And singles, go buy yourself a Valentine's gift. Like, don't wait on don't, Go sing yourself some flowers. Like, instead of letting the enemy taunt you with what, that you don't have somebody to do it, do it yourself. Take yourself to dinner. Buy you some flowers. Buy you some chocolates. Now, don't overdo it and just eat a bunch of a box of chocolates. Treat <laughs> yourself to something nice. Maybe it's something that you've been looking at, and it's in your budget to purchase it. Purchase it and say, you know, this is because I love me. But don't get into the dumps because somebody didn't buy you something for Valentine's Day. You got the greatest love of all, and that's not just you know, taking it from Whitney Houston. We have the greatest love that's unconditional and that is our Father God. And allow him to love on you, but also he has equipped us to love on ourselves and encourage ourselves. And so I want you to have an amazing February. Uh, we're going to, I think this is our only She Wrote Week for this month because we have family, family first conference uh, where we're strengthening the family with the apostle uh, this month. I'm almost positive that we don't have another She Wrote Week because it's during family first, but I have been so blessed by you. Uh, make sure y'all connect. Put that up one more time for me, Lisa, and how they can connect with Jen at uh, Facebook, Jennifer Trotter, and uh, Instagram at Lady Inspiration. All right, y'all. Y'all have a good night. I hope to see y'all Sunday at the light. And those of you who are in Houston, stay warm and off those streets because y'all know we don't know how to drive. How about you? <laughs>